Hi friends, welcome to Grinch Granny. This is Ren. I know I haven't recorded a longer video in a while. I think it's because I started to kind of psych myself out, slash, it seemed like shorts were doing better. And then shorts kind of became so time consuming that, you know, I didn't really have time. But I wanted to go ahead and talk about this journal. So I made this William Morris style journal a while ago. I have this little paper clip. It's a hidden paper clip with a tuck and it was magnetic too, so I felt pretty fancy with that. I did a cloth cover by request. This is the first commission journal I'd ever done and I was pretty proud of it. But I have to confess that I actually wasn't super familiar with a lot of William Morris' style. I found a lot of other people's journals that were made um, inspired by William Morris and they were really cool but I didn't really want to copy anybody. I wanted to find a way to do a William Morris theme journal, but in my style. I loved this little tuck with all the pockets and the flip through paper for extra journaling spots. Oh, and a lot of this paper I had either coffee dyed or tea dyed. Oh, and all of the William Morris themed ephemera that I used for this journal I found on Etsy from a shop called Digital Hobby Helper. I'm sure that everyone probably knows this shop because they have so much stuff on there. And I'm not gonna lie, I got a ton of different digitals from them. This project got me really into making a whole bunch of layered tags and finding ways to just add more texture and dimension to things. Cause that's my favorite part really, is that is making the ephemera and finding ways to layer and texturize things. And I say that, but I don't have an embossing folder and I don't have a die cutter that can emboss. And I also don't have any kind of like embossing powders and I've never used crackle paste, but these are all things that I do know about and I'm interested in utilizing someday to add texture. I have also since gotten a new sewing machine, so I've been able to do a lot more stitching and have improved in my sewing skills and I'm pretty proud of that. So let's get real for a second because I haven't posted a longer video here on YouTube in quite a while and I gotta say it's because I think I was just letting the views get to me. I started to get really discouraged by working so hard because editing and recording and getting everything up to be on YouTube takes a really long time for it to not get a lot of views and then whenever I was posting shorts, they took so much less time and were so much easier to edit and easier to add music to that I thought, well, this just doesn't seem to be like a realistic way to express my creativity that, could I, that I could turn into a career someday. But of course, the same thing happens with shorts also. And even on TikTok, whenever, you know, you're posting every day for a while and then things hardly get any views. I think that I'm learning, well, it's been a very big learning year for me. <laughs> I've had to learn to truly just fall in love with the process, to really be more mindful of the journey, and also to prioritize my self-care. I call it getting spinny because when I start to look too much at numbers, I start to wonder, was it my thumbnail? Was it the content itself? Was it the way I edited the video? Did I not make anything that was impressive enough for anyone to even look at? Which really makes me sad. Maybe the things that I say aren't super relatable, or maybe I'm not interesting to listen to. But then I also know realistically that a part of it is just time. I have to keep reminding myself that ultimately what I want to do is, you know, attract an audience that has a similar mentality, that loves similar things, that finds appreciation in paper crafting and loves journaling, loves self-reflection, and likes to hear about that kind of thing. There will always be faster growth for people who post things more for the masses, but when you are posting things that are more niche and you're wanting a very specific kind of audience, then that will just take more time naturally. I keep reminding myself to think about my absolute closest friends, who I think are truly the brightest rarest gems in the world and it's taken me a very long time to get this very small friend group of like four people and I think that they are priceless and I feel like pursuing content creating is my way of finding those same kinds of gems on a bigger scale 
and it will just take a while and that's okay. But it's for that reason that I made this journal, I believe in October, <laughs> and I'm only posting it now in March. And I've since made other journals and I really wanna record those flip throughs and I wanna be able to show them to people. And I'm debating how I wanna do it because I would like this to be a faster process. I know that I will get faster over time, but I'm still learning how best to do it. I also wanna be able to talk to people in a much more open way because I feel like shorts only allow me to say one singular thought without explanation or any elaboration. But I'm a talker, so I wanna be able to talk. I thought about posting some craft with me's, but I'm also worried about that. I'm obviously overthinking it. It feels weird to be what I've always called a no niche artist and pursuing content creation because pursuing being a content creator feels really ludicrous, especially at my age. And I'm, I'm 33, I know that I'm not as old as some of the people that are on here doing craft with me's and whatnot. I'm just saying that it feels like that for me to pursue it as a main career, because for others it seems like it's something they happened into just doing it for fun. I just recognize that content creation is one of the few ways that I could probably pursue all of my interests in one go and be able to turn it into a career. Let me know if you want me to repost this flip through while I actually talk through each thing, but I kind of feel like anybody who does watch a junk journaling flip through will kind of recognize what a lot of these things are, or if they don't, then I am totally down to talk about them because I love talking about that too. I also recognize that YouTube is kind of one of the bigger things that I'm insecure about. I'm much more nervous on YouTube. I'm very insecure about the things that I put up on here because they don't seem to do as well as any other platform. And this video, along with doing my taxes, were two of the things that I've been procrastinating for months. But I can't say that I have a dream to be a content creator and then not create the content and not do the taxes. <laughs> like, I need to do that. So finishing this video and actually putting it up is a form of my own self-care. This is a way that I am tending to myself and showing myself love. I'm working on showing up in all the areas that I need to. And I hope that you got something out of this video. <laughs> and if not, then thank you so much for listening. And thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.